Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to have our heads in the clouds and that is because Unity recently added volumetric clouds to Unity 20, uh, 21.2 and frankly they are sweet. So we're going to check out how to do this. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and enable all this stuff. It's pretty straightforward but a little non-intuitive. So basically volumetric clouds are a way to create clouds in your game. Uh, you can create them both so that you can fly through them or so that they are in the background in the um, uh, skybox in the background and they'll interact with the lighting in your scene. You can have the sun peeking through them and so on and so forth. And they're pretty easy to set up on the whole. So let's walk through the uh, process of creating clouds and go. So first off, you're going to need an HDRP project. Uh, also, once again, you need to be using Unity 2021.2 or higher. That means the current tech version, which probably means it's going to be buggy and glitchy because that's the nature of the beast. But once you have that set up, it is pretty straightforward. There's two settings we have to enable to get clouds to work. First off, let's go here, we'll go to edit, we'll go to project settings, and there are two settings. The first one is under graphics, HDRP global settings, go on down, locate frame, lighting, and under lighting, click volumetric clouds. I also turned on full resolution clouds for sky. I don't know what that actually does, but hey, full resolution is always nicer. Uh, once you have that set up under graphics, go to uh, quality, find out what version you are running. So in this case, we are running eight, uh, the high fidelity HDRP pipeline. Go to HDRP, click the high fidelity here at the top, go on down, find rendering, and then under rendering, find lighting, and under lighting, find volumetrics, and under volumetrics, finally find volumetric clouds and click that on. If you miss either of those two steps, none of the above is going to work. So make sure you set both of those things. And once you're done, you are 90% of the way there. So the next part is really easy. You're gonna to have to add a volume to your scene. So for example, I could come in here, go new, volume, global volume. But in this case, I'm actually going to do things a little bit simpler. So I'm just gonna use the sky and fog volume that was already created for us. And what we do is add an override to it. So I'm just gonna come here, add override, go down and find sky like so, and then add volumetric clouds. Ta-da. All right, there we go. So we added our volumetric clouds. Don't they look pretty? Oh, wait, they aren't here yet. Well, that's got to, we gotta set a couple things up. First things first, we turn, uh, don't, wrong click, enable, on, like so, and then we do cloud control, simple. Here we go, we have volumetric clouds. That's really all that's involved. By the way, if you wanna be able to interact with your clouds, so right now they're being added to the generated skybox. They do interact with the light that's in the scene. So here you can see the sun. So let's go grab our sun right here. Um, let's go to the emissions for it, for example, and let's just turn the intensity down. So as you can see, those volumetric clouds are interacting with the lighting in the scene. Um, which is very, very nice. Uh, you do have the option, once again, come on down here, back to the, the things. You can turn local clouds on, and as you can see by the text tip, uh, they'll in, if they appear between the camera and the game objects, they will be rendered. So if you have to fly through them, so if you're doing like a, a, a flight simulator style game, that's what you're going to want to do. But I'm going to stick with the global clouds for now, just because they're simply easier. Now, if you've got the simple setup, you've got a lot of controls, simple controls over it. We can control uh, the presets of the clouds, you can control the thickness of the clouds. So let's go here and de demonstrate 4,000. Come on. I wish it didn't update every time you pressed a character. It would be much more pleasant to work with. As you can see, they are recalculating, and there we have thinner clouds going on here. You also have control, simple controls over your clouds under the simple category. Uh, we could change that out, or we could change the presets. So let's go here to the preset. So the preset is cloudy sky. We could go ahead and change cloudy out to overcast. Again, give it a second. It will recalculate them. And there, gloomy overcast, overcast day going on here. You can also set the lowest altitude that clouds will appear at by clicking this guy over here. I do believe this is the default setting, so let's go ahead and set that to five. 100, like so, and our cloud should come down a little bit. We also have control over here. Uh, we can do stormy. Now, I find stormy and overcast look almost identical. Uh, so I should have actually kind of switched between them. But here you can see we've got some stormy clouds going on. I guess it's quite a bit different. Okay, I'll give it that. So you, you got really easy to add clouds going on. So we can go back here again. So we got simple so far that we've looked at. And you can see the various different settings here. So we can change the uh, how the wind interacts with those clouds. By the way, if it's about to get loud, there's someone doing a... a, a 
uh, what are they called, leaf blower outside, and I can't stop them. So I'm just going to keep recording. You also got control over if the clouds will shadow the ground. I don't have anything set up for them to shadow off, so I'll leave that off. You got control over the quality and so on, uh, but we can also do some advanced controls of them. So we got two other options. We can do advanced and completely manual. I'm not going to do manual, but I'll show you some of the advanced right now, and you can actually create and use a texture map for how these things work. I think actually we're going to lose it completely because I don't have any textures to find. So let's create a cumulus map. So if this is going to control our cumulus textures. And what this is, I'll go back to the explanation over here to explain it. Here is the documentation on volumetric clouds. You'll see they are defined by cloud maps. So there's cloud maps and a cloud LUT. And I'm going to, we're not going to cover the LUT, but I'll show you how the cloud map works. It's basically broken down. It's an RGB image. So the red channel specifies the density of the clouds with full red being uh, more affected by noise, zero being less affected. Green is the amount of rain at zero to one and so on. So let's go ahead and we'll create this texture. So I'm just going to go ahead in a photo editor of choice. We're going to make an RGB um, uh, image like so. All right, here we go. So what we want to do is go ahead and paint it in. We'll do the full red to start. So let's just get rid of the green and get rid of the blue on this channel right here. Let's go into our paintbrush. Uh, okay, let me switch my brushes out. So I want like a bit of a splatter brush. All right, there we go. So we got a bit of a splatter brush. I'll go back to our color, make sure it is selected. And okay, I am in the wrong mode. Oh, I'm in the wrong mode. All right, let's... Uh, Get rid of that selection. Let's go actually to the paint brush as opposed to the paint selection. Here we go. So we're gonna paint some. All right, buddy, I said red. All right, here we go. So we're gonna paint our red in. So again, more red, uh, more affected by noise and good. All right, so let's go down a little bit in the redness and let's paint the outskirts. All right, so there we've painted the red channel here and we will go ahead and do a file and export and then export and we'll we'll put it in our directory right here i'm sure that okay that's the right directory uh cloud map all right so we just created png in our project going back over here you're going to see we now have our cloud map available let's just drop that in the cumulus cloud generator and then boom there are our clouds now again green controls the rain control so let's go back here and we'll go back to zero green we'll add a bunch of green here and we can just all right, so we got a lot of full green. Let's do some partial green. Okay, so there we go. We'll save. Sorry, we'll do an export. File, export, export. Uh, cloud map, save, replace. All right, there we go. Head on back over. And now we should have a little bit more um, rain in our clouds as soon as they finish updating. And there you go. So that is controlling the uh, cumulus sets of clouds. You can also do the uh, alto status, the columbinus. I, I, sorry, I cannot speak the, um, <laughs> the names of clouds. And also do a rain map. Since we got that green in there, it should actually work. So let's drop a rain map in here. And there you see the End results, we've got a lot more rain coming in. Uh, let's do the cumulus map, or the alto. That's the exact same cloud. So obviously you could create different maps for different clouds. And then we'll finally do the this one. And again, just drop the map in. And Bob's your uncle. So there you go. You got a ton of control over the clouds, how they work. So you might want to get rid of the rain map because we're looking awfully rainy now. So there you see. Uh, the three different styles of clouds all being set up here. You've got control over uh, things like uh, shape factor, shape scale, and so on. Let me just enable that guy right there. You can see the results as you go through it. Uh, so it's pretty cool on the whole. Let's turn erosion factor, erosion scale on. We can set the curvature of the earth and how they impact the clouds like so. Uh, we can turn wind on. I'm not sure what value goes here. I probably shouldn't go off script at this point because I'm not sure what how to actually configure wind. There we go. So there is our thing. Again, you've got control over how the lighting works, ambient lighting. We can add a tint in. We can have it shadow or not shadow down. Again, you got to turn it on when you enable it. So if we had uh, a plane here on the ground, it would be picking up shadows coming through the clouds. And yeah, that's volumetric clouds in... Um, the Unity game engine. Again, this is a 2021 feature. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look how they look at final. So I'm gonna go back to my camera. All right, let me just go add a, uh, add a fly script on this one. So let's go to my uh, package manager. Do, 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 Come on, faster, faster, buddy, faster. All right, here we go. So fly. All right. Seriously, they should let you type a bit. None of this live searching stuff. All right, free fly camera. I'll add this into our scene. Import. All right, good to go. So this just gives us mouse look on our camera. Shut that down. Let's go to our camera. We will add that guy in. Free fly camera. All right, there we go. So now we have camera in the scenes. Let's go check out our game in action. Let's go ahead and hit play. And here are our clouds. And up we go. Now you'll notice we're not getting any closer to them. Uh, that is because, so we're up in the atmosphere right now, they are done on the skybox. So again, if you want to have it so that you can actually interact with it, get into the clouds per se, uh, what you need to do is set them up as local clouds. So once again, that is the setting available right here. And I have not really had a lot of success with it, so that's why I'm not demonstrating it today. But what you probably want to do, if you're just starting out with this guy, just go into simple. Again, you can just come in here and say, okay, stormy or cloudy or sparse, whatever you want. Let it create clouds for you. And then you can change the, th the settings, you know, like the Earth's curvature. So how they'll, they'll arc around the, the globe of the Earth. Uh, you can set the thickness of clouds, so on, how high or low they will appear on the horizon. And you're done. Bob's your uncle, and that's all it takes. So that is the new volumetric clouds. It's apparently taking a while to figure that one out. Uh, here in the uh, Unity game engine, again, this is a feature of Unity 2021.2 or later, and you need to use HDRP. Now, I do believe they're working on this uh, for the... Um, the universal render pipeline, but I don't want to be quoted on that. If you do want, there is more documentation available here. I'll throw, I'll do an article about this. I'll throw the links down below. So if you want to walk through it, I'll also do a bit of a quick text tutorial on getting things up and set up. So again, quick summary, you do have to come into edit project settings and then go to the quality HDRP, the HDRP um, fidelity that you are currently running, and then go on down to volumetrics under lighting and turn it on. Also have to go to the HDRP global settings. You go to the lighting section and you turn volumetric clouds on and you're good to go. That is it. That is um, volumetric clouds in Unity 2021.2. This used to be something that you needed add-ons to do. So it's kind of cool to see it being added in. Uh, they're really easy to work with. They give you a lot of fine-tuned control over them. And as we saw just a little bit of in this video, and hopefully some of you found that interesting. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.